What's crack a everybody? Money Smart Guy, Matt Zapala here. Hey, Lindsay here from Dallas, Texas, and welcome to episode 48 here of the Seven Figure Squad podcast. Ride and shouty with me here in the studio is my man, my trainer, my co-host, Milton Alvarez, and special guest flying in from three years ago from Argentina. Now, mate, Dallas are home. Now, Dallas is her home. <laughs> yeah. Would you uh, care to introduce our guest here yeah. today? Actually, let me let me take it through a little bit of who she is and what she does. You have quite a bit of resume here. Check um, it out. Enjoy. If we can pull up that video of her training uh, Mr. Derrick Henry. She's a distinguished pro athlete fitness professional. And here's a clip of her training Derrick Henry, a running back for the Tennessee Titans. Big boy. Let's see it. Lightweight, man. Light oh, okay. He's doing it. <laughs> and you're training you train this man out of Sanders Fit. In, in yes. That flexibility Sa is all. He's, he's really flexible. Sanders Fit, downtown Dallas. Yes. Nice facility. I, I need to ch check that place out. Also, um, here's a picture of her training with WNBA superstar Tia Cooper from the Los Angeles Sparks. WNBA. WNBA. Wow, no kidding. So you... So, She's had a line of NFL, WNBA, and also pro uh, volleyball players that she's worked with who are right now are touring in other countries. She's a former Argentinian professional volleyball player. She has extensive knowledge on occupational therapy, and she's an advocate on the power of lifestyle change to prevent and reverse diseases. You've empowered hundreds of women in the last couple of years and guiding them towards maximizing their potential and, become, and helping them become who... God has called him to be. Elisa Charadia, welcome to the show. Hello, good morning, people. I'm so grateful to be here. Thank you. How do you say your last name again? One more time. Chiaradia. Chiaradia. It's Italian, so it's Chiaradia. 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 Oh, that's, that's awesome. a little bit easier. Chiaradia is a little Jordan, bit easier. Jordan, if you would mind, let's uh, also look at her Instagram page here, too, as well. Um, here, now based in Dallas, first thing that stuck out to me here, looking at your page, I love Jesus. Yes. Praise I the do. Lord. I Amen. Love how long have you been following? How long have you been following Christ? Oh, I been been. He's been my friend, best friend for the last two years. That's Before awesome. I was Catholic, Amen. but I didn't really know him. Was it in your opinion? What's the difference between following Christ and being Catholic? Catholic is is a religion. Not necessarily you have a relationship. Mm, there you go. You know. Mm, yeah. And so I get to know him when I was at the lowest of the yeah, lowest. Yeah. And yeah. I know him now. <laughs> By the way, we always talk in our in our financial workshops about understanding the language of money. Yeah. And you came here to the United States because you wanted to learn what to do what? Well, I wanted to learn English first as a tool to sell more. I was in sales. I was really good selling in Mexico, right? And I come utopically, I thought, I will learn English in two, three months, which yeah. didn't happen. And then the Lord kept me here. Amen to that. Yeah. Very good. <laughs> By the way, you're speaking English very well. By the way, for those of you watching this right now, we're going to hear her speak English the entire time. But uh, <laughs> one of the ways to learn a new language, whether it be English or money, you got to immerse yourself in the environment. So uh, on the show today, we're going to talk a little bit about her career, training athletes. We're looking forward to uh, your insight on that. We're also looking for some insight in your opinion, our, our, our topics um, on, on our show about how to make your life better from a financial standpoint, because we dedicate our podcast here to helping, th helping you think like a millionaire, strategize like a millionaire, so therefore you can become a first generation cash flow millionaire. Mm -hmm. I've got some potential career opportunities for many of you all to consider mm. making $100,000 a year. A major industry that's lacking personnel entering it, you might want to be interested in this career because they might be future most valuable assets of any company. We're going to talk about the importance of making sure you pick the right one. So, uh, Elisa, you just got married, right? Uh, yes. Uh, so, congratulations <laughs> to that. Thank you so much. And this is my the, the clip here we're going to share here later is my biggest heart, one of my biggest heartache situations of of marriages and sadly ending not the way it's supposed to be, but we're gonna be covering what that looks like. And maybe some of these, uh, I remind of when I, when I look at these uh, clips, I remind of a military safety briefing. Mm. For example, the military used to take us in the, in the safety briefings, listen, hey Marines, if you go out in town, make sure you wear a condom because you don't <laughs> want your stuff looking like this, right? <laughs> and like, we're all shocked and like, you know, either we wear protection or we don't do anything at all. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So that's my purpose of showing you these divorce videos because I want to hopefully scare you to make sure you get away from these types of circumstances and scenarios. Also, menu engineering. Why do you spend more money at a restaurant? It's called menu engineering. We'll get more into that. And uh, could you imagine, Milton? At least imagine making 500 bucks for taking a shit in a bag. We're going to cover that story here in a second. <laughs> but uh, also, um, I want to know your perspective here on 
what this guy's foot looks like here in a future clip here about breaking ankles. You got some topics on your end. 100%. On the health and wellness and fitness side, we're going to be speaking about how occupational therapists don't get enough credit and they can actually save a person's life and their mental well-being. Number two also is body dysmorphia. As my friend Ellie here was saying, over 70% of women suffer from body dysmorphia. And when we want to be able to shine some light on it on how you can work through it and get over yeah. that obstacle that a lot of us have encountered at some point of our lives. And when it comes down to the relationship aspect, you two can definitely help this guy figure out <laughs> what the next is when it comes down to relationships <laughs> since both of you guys are married. And we're kind of speaking about- Male or female? At this point, man, I don't know anyone. <laughs> He's okay. At this point, I have no idea. You know, female, 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 female. <laughs> Speaking about partnerships are not picked based on pleasure, but purpose, Michael Todd. And also, right. are men really meant to build their women? Are men really meant to take on women and treat them as projects? Ooh. Or do you have to come into the relationship as equally yoked people? Mm. Mm. And one trending topic that I want to be able to speak about is sucks to be you. Raising a weak generation, how a lot of these people within in their early 20s are walking through life thinking that that life, that their jobs, that their parents, that their friends, that society owes them something. So that clip is definitely something I really want to touch on. A couple things, Jordan. Uh, Jordan, by the way, do we have that clip about Argentina uh, by any chance, oh Jordan? Oh my goodness. <laughs> uh, let me know if you have it. I did send another email about the clip about Argentina. If not, no big deal. Uh, okay, either way, um, as, you, as you're checking that out, uh, we, got, we got to take it. Because you haven't, you haven't seen this clip of no. the Argentinian president getting elected and what he's about to do. But uh, he is going scorched earth there in Argentina. By the way, I want to talk about Argentina real quick. Let's, uh, If we wouldn't mind, Jordan, take a look at my screen. Um, first of all, you got to make sure you follow Elisa here on uh, Instagram. This is her page. Uh, let's, uh, we mind sharing your Instagram handle because you say your name better than I do. Elisa Tierra Dia. And the handle is Elisa Tierra Dia Tres. Yeah. All right, Tres. All right, tres. verified and all that good stuff. Very good. And also here, we're talking about Argentina. The country you're from, the average person in Argentina makes $4,300 per year. A year? Yes. Per year. Annual household income. That amounts to about 350 bucks yep. every month. That's correct. What, is the, what do the people do in Argentina? What's the, what Mainly are the jobs? Yeah. agriculture. We'll be in charge of the meat exportation to the almost entire world. The best meat you get in yeah. here it's coming from there. <laughs> she was talking about like steak and, and, yeah. and yeah. With, with carne beef. Asada. What else? Yeah. Carne asada. Carne asada. Best, <laughs> best Argentinian meal is, in your opinion? No. And it, like if you Google it, it's considered one of the best meat in the world. It's not my opinion. And She's yeah. Like, facts. Yeah. Facts. Yeah. Facts. <laughs> facts. Okay. If it's so, on Google, it's um, facts. Yeah. Google facts. And um, people is yeah I, I really i get really sad talking about my country because we're going through a really tough moment now yeah. but yeah uh, people yeah. make even less than that yeah and my mom is a lawyer she gotta have two three jobs to wow. raise the kids and she's a really prepared and wow. woman went to college master degree everything you can imagine and still they're struggling yeah. so yeah yeah and, and for those of you folks here in america that's fair warning what happens when a government continues to expand and over-regulate and get involved more and more in people's lives. Because I, I did some real quick search while she was here on the average, um, uh, the economy in, in the uh, the GDP. So here's a gross domestic product of, of Argentina, which is an indication of the overall economic health of a country. As you see here, going back to 1970, the ups and downs of, of the Argentine economy. By the way, back in the 40s, 50s, 60s, what's that song? Na, 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 na. Hmm? Uh, this old school song from Argentina. Say it again. All in my heart, Argentina. No, maybe oh. so. Maybe so. What's that song? Uh, no llores por mi Argentina. Yes, 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 yes. See, but, but she's like, you I, sing? I, I promise I won't quit <laughs> my day job. I used to. <laughs> What's the name of that song? Um, no llores por mi Argentina. I think so. That's it. Yeah. Very good. That's it. So, but that was written during an era when Argentina was at its height. Yeah. And yeah. what happens is when you let policies happen in the country, that's why. I never thought I'd get involved in politi uh, politics until I understood what these policies do to make our lives better or worse. Yes. And many people here in America are facing a much worse life than they were uh, uh, pre and uh, during and now post pandemic. And this is what the Argentinian economy has done. So imagine having a country in 1960 go negative. That's what happened to Argentina. Yeah. Then pops up here to 10% and back down again. This, this is a fancy word we call volatility, ups and downs of an economy. And as of recently, uh, you came here in what, 2021? 20. 2020. So during the pandemic. 
Wow. Yeah. One of the worst years to come to America. It was it was bad. How was the pandemic in uh, in Argentina? How did, they how shut did down you? absolutely everything. People could not get out of their house because they literally will have issues with the police, which it was not like that in Mexico. But as uh, soon as I got here, everything uh, shut down, and I was like, oh, I need to create my own job because I can't go work for nobody else. So that's it. You just yeah. you just you just wired down. Yeah. Right? <laughs> and so here, what it was in Argentina when you came here in 2020? Uh, 9.1 one more time, uh, Jordan. Negative 9.9 percent GDP yeah. in, in Argentina. Okay. Just to give it some context, this is Argentina gross domestic product of the country. Compare that to America. This this is America. The last since going back to 1970. Okay, that's the stark difference between us living in America and Elisa here living in Argentina. Mm -hmm. Which country would you prefer the last 60 years? America? Oh my goodness. Or Argentina? There it is. So talk to us about your journey of starting your own deal, starting your own business. Because you come here not learning how to speak English. You come here to learn how to speak English. You're doing well, by the way. <laughs> and you're speaking you. a language of entrepreneurship, starting your, own, starting your own deal, not working for somebody, working for yourself. Talk yeah. to us about that. Okay, some things I don't know if it's legal to say or not, but I will. <laughs> so I opened my company under my brother's name because I was not a citizen. Mm -hmm. I'm still not a citizen. Uh, so I started managing the company with him um, mm -hmm. under his name. He's a student. He lived in Georgia. And um, I started learning. I didn't even know how to do taxes. Like, we don't have wow. taxes like here. I didn't know anything about the economy here, wow. how, how to grow a business, how to create a system, mm -hmm. how to create a team. And so I started reading. I started reading all the books <laughs> that I have Good available in Spanish and some of them in English. Yeah. And looking for mentors and um, yeah, it's doing really well. Very good. And of course, you play uh, you play volleyball too, right? Yes, uh, I did. I play volleyball. I play national league uh, indoor volleyball, and then I play national league um, beach volleyball. Gotcha. Yeah. Gotcha. Always, that's a, my passion. A, volleyball is a beautiful sport, man. It's a, it's a beautiful sport. I I told my daughters if you play volleyball, okay. Papi's going to show up to your game in those volleyball shorts. <laughs> Go ahead. Try it. Try it. So they, instead, they chose track. They chose track. Uh, like, Smart guys. <laughs> it's, it's just bad. It's just bad. But for those fathers out there, they know it. I said, girls, you wear basketball shorts. All the girls can wear that uniform. But my girls, they can wear basketball shorts. <laughs> but uh, there's a new league that's being started. I was, I was proposed to invest into it. But Dallas yeah. is supposed to open up a new league and one of the new franchises are going to be right here in, in volleyball wow how come there's yeah. so much attention and, and fascination with the game of volleyball it's becoming a new professional sport yeah actually uh my one of my professional volleyball players she was going to play in that league but everything started getting delayed so she yeah. got she got called from greece and she's playing there overseas yeah she's playing overseas. that's really so. cool Where, was, the, which country is the most popular for volleyball um america's great brazil had the best one of the best teams in the world in Italy. Italy, and Brazil. Italy, Brazil, and USA. In beach volleyball, mainly USA. Oh, really? Yeah. Because ma mainly beach volleyball sports in America. Yeah, and I guess it's because population. Uh, and one thing that caught my attention is my brother went to uh, college because of uh, tennis scholarship, mm -hmm. right? Uh, in Argentina, we don't get any type of investment as athletes. You have to get professionally, like, you know, rowing it really hard. Like you okay. have to do it on your own, pay your own trees, pay your, pay your racket, pay for your balls, pay for As everything. Yes, until you get to make money out of you, you know, like really busting. Like it's hard. Mm -hmm. And But here you got, you go to college, you're already being prepared to be yeah. a professional. Mm -hmm. So it's completely different. When you get there, it's all hard, <laughs> hard and hard work, yeah. but zero money or help from the government. Or, yeah. Not even like being a, in a national team. So. Sure. Would you, would you say that people who aren't playing for uh, those kind of sports, like for example, people who play here versus people who play in different countries, would you say that people who play in different countries have to work almost twice as hard yes. in order to be able to be seen 100%. and actually be put in a, in a pedestal? A hundred percent. Like my dad was a professional soccer player and he was one of the best of his team, but at, back then mm -hmm. he didn't get to be seen unless he was living in Buenos Aires, which was the capital of Argentina, where all the players were, Boca Junior, River Play. It's, it's, really, it's really tough, but it's rewarding when you get there because you feel like, you actually oh my gosh, I gave it all. Your ass for it. In, in, yeah. in, in Argentina or any other country from what you understand, just like here, you, you know, mm -hmm. you're, you're in, sometimes in middle school or high school, 
uh, you're playing good at a specific sport. You have scouts, college scouts yeah. already sc scouting yeah. you out. Yeah. Yeah. Do you guys have the same exact thing where people from like, what, for example, you go to you leave Buenos Aires, and there's scouts leaving Buenos Aires to go to the smaller towns or smaller districts uh, to to look for athletes, or is the athlete in charge of them, their own success, and they have to go to those specific places to even be looked at? Do you guys have scouts? Uh, we do, like, and you can get people to manage. But the thing is that to uh, like succeed in terms of money you got to get out of the country because what they pay you can't really live out of that no. so unless it's football like you like Messi Messi prefer to leave one of the best players in the world he prefer to live in Europe yeah. because they would invest more in him than Argentina yeah. even being professional he will make 100,000 times what he's making in Argentina playing yeah. the same yeah. game so yes yeah, but some of the baddest athletes come out of Argentina uh, the <laughs> And the, in spite of the economy, some of the baddest athletes come out of uh, Argentina. Uh, speaking of Argentina, um, the new president just got elected over there, and he's got scorched earth tendencies over there, and it looks like he's carrying through with it. So can we take a look? At, I would love to see your reaction to this oh when we get to see this. But his philosophy <laughs> okay. is to shrink government because right now he feels it's too much. So let's take a look at this clip. That's definitely that's the actual. Yeah, that's, that's, that's the president, bro. That's the president, the new president. President Millet. La situación de Argentina es crítica. Los cambios que nuestro país necesita son drásticos. No hay lugar para gradualismo. No hay lugar para la tibieza. No hay lugar para medias tintas. He's going in. Look at him. He is going in. They voted him in. So he's explained the government. Si nos movemos hacia aquella pizarra, que Ministerio de Turismo y Deporte, afuera. Ministerio de Cultura, afuera. Ministerio de Ambiente y Desarrollo Sostenible, afuera. Ministerio de las Mujeres y Género y Diversidad, afuera. Ministerio de Obras Públicas, afuera. Aunque te resistas. What? His alter ego. Short enough, Anna Karkapolis. I'm 100% embarrassed. <laughs> <laughs> oh my God. This is alter ego. This is alter ego. Number three, how's he going to fix the country? Chainsaw to the. Well, definitely a safe part of the city is try. Look at that. The American dollar <laughs> is coming down to Argentina. You can get rid of the Argentina peso. Oh my god. This, this, it's so weird, huh? This is. Weirdest thing. Oh wow. Alineamiento de geopolítica es Estados Unidos e Israel. Esa es okay. nuestra política. We can, we, can, we can stop right there. So let's just talk about the economy, the, the, the financial aspect. What do, you, what do you think about all those departments he's getting? He's, in other words, he's shrinking government. Mm -hmm. He's shrinking the department. Some of the most, crit some of the most critical left areas of, of government he's, he's getting rid of. Now, you're from, you're from Argentina. Yeah. You know, what's your initial reaction to this? Well, at this point, I went through many different uh, right and left governments. Oh, interesting. And okay. They were all terrible. And they stole all the money of the country for uh, their own benefit, yeah. right? And I have yeah. proof of that. Like, people that I've talked, that have worked, that work in the mm -hmm. government, and they have told me, I've never seen any time in my life people stealing like they're stealing from Argentina from the, the country from our yeah, money the people yeah, yeah, yeah. money so I see the videos and I feel marriage a mm -hmm. little bit like this is where my country is going mm -hmm. but at the same time I know that there need to be drastic decisions to be made and I don't know if this is the right um, mm. president, I, I haven't gone back to Argentina in six years, uh, mm. but I do know that definitely if we don't do something, people people's going to be hungry. People is hungry. Yeah. They, they they need to uh, cut, you know, the budget that they're using for government uh, salaries and do something about the economy. Yeah, because right now, if uh, you look at our inflation, inflation is kicking everybody's tail here in yeah. America. Uh, the peak was 9% last uh, June, July of inflation things just cost more money i'm just curious what do you think argentina's inflation is 
Give me a number. Nine percent? No, I don't think no, so. No, definitely not. Higher? Lower? Above thirty percent? No. Keep, keep going. It's like like nine hundred percent. Like inflation is Let's take a look at my screen. So it's right here, 180. Take a look at my screen. 185 percent, bro. <laughs> well, I even thought it was more because my mom, I called yeah. her last week and she said, Ellie, I go to the store and in the same day, prices of things change. I don't know in how much. Day. In one, one day, day. She doesn't know how much she's going to pay for groceries. What don't you think people here in America understand about America compared to other countries? You say what? Repeat it. What do people here in America not understand about America as compared to people from other countries? The, the amount of opportunities they have. Like buying a car, buying a house, you gotta go buy cash. There's not loans. Nobody's gonna borrow. Like, you can't borrow money in Argentina. Hmm. You can just put a down payment and get payments on a house. Either you have the cash, or you just uh, some of uh, yeah. how do you say it? sorteo? Like when you have to apply to get a house from the government, and it would take years and probably it's you're like in a, the it's least. Like, it's like a, that's where you a, have a to raffle. buy a house in, in Argentina. You have to apply to the government to get a house in Argentina. Yeah, I mean wow. you can get a house if you have the money, yeah, but you said sorteo, no, it's like a yeah. raffle. They put your name name in, in place and they wrap your name. You take it out and if you get it, you get it. Yeah. So by luck. Yeah. Versus saying, hey, I busted my tail. I earned my money. Let me go buy a house. You can do that. My mom owned a house, but that was maybe an entire year of savings. Yeah. Uh, when wow. here, you don't need to save entire life to buy a house yeah. or to buy a car. Yeah. Bingo. So, yeah. Talk, talk to us about how you started clientele. We saw you there um, training professional athletes. How did you get, how did you get to, to training pro athletes? Well, I had already... Uh, professional athlete mentality and I train a lot of yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> I train a lot of volleyball players back in my country but uh, I wasn't sure I'm gonna be honest with you I didn't know this was my calling I didn't know I was gonna do this mm -hmm. I came here because I was really good at sales I knew I could, I could make good money I mm -hmm. was gonna go back to Mexico keep doing what I was doing and then get some investments but then mm -hmm. when I came here my perspective changed I'm like okay if I learn this language I can be my own boss I can be the owner of the life I want to create mm -hmm. and I don't see that opportunity in Mexico, not in Argentina, even less, right? And so I started my company and I started training just people. My client avatar will be like 25 to 40 years old woman, Latina mainly. They are struggling. They have diabetes, PCOS, because like 70% mm. of American has a chronic disease. 70. Seven wow. out of 10 have chronic disease. So mm. I got really passionate because mm. of my background in health. And I'm like, I need to do something about this. That is a different perspective that changed people's lives, that helped them to become everything they were created to be. Mm -hmm. And on that environment, which was at the gym, I also... I'm really passionate about athletes, so I started training um, a lot. We train at Santa Fe, the, uh, the Cowboys player, we train NBA players, so I'm really exposed to that every day. By the way, that's she just talked about how to make money, period. Find a problem, find out what you bring to the table to fix that problem, and create a business out of it. As si simple as that. People make it so doggone hard that, the, oh, I can't do that, I can't do that. She's not even from this country. She's kicking your butt. <laughs> Coming from another country, don't even speak this language. But yeah, Americans here are complaining. They go, oh, no opportunity, et cetera, et cetera. So, um, when, when you guys are, are are connected here in business, what what uh, what what areas of of commonality do you see? Because you started your own business too, as well in in the uh, in during the, the pandemic. World. During the pandemic, that's right. During Both the y'all oh, wow. started during the pandemic. During the pandemic, it's just it's, I think it's a chip on our shoulders as Latinos, and I don't, I don't want to use the race card or the cultural card, but I think as Latinos we have a chip on our on our shoulder that our parents worked it up to a certain level and we have like this mindset that we have to always do better than them to mm -hmm. show that what they did for us when they were young uh, when we were younger was exactly what they needed to do in order for us to get the exposure that we needed yeah. and it's just almost a conviction first of all for god that you gave me this life you gave me this body you gave me the opportunity to learn to be around certain cool mm -hmm. people and why would i not use those doors of opportunity that you've given me to glorify you and every time that i succeed in something and I, or i level up or i get more exposure or i get new business opportunities those are opportunities for us to glorify god and what better way to do it than through the platform that he has given us and then the same thing you know being able to put our family's name you know on on the map and being able to keep growing keep growing keep growing and i think for you like i, I don't know how i would do if i would be moving to a different country i have no absolutely no idea how i, I would do but did you have somewhere. anybody here did you have any friends here any no, no. no you know no you know they know anybody nobody no and, and you don't think i'm nervous about latina women I, I feel like a lot of latina women have more cajones than a lot of the latino guys <laughs> moving from a different country yeah. into a new country which is scary you know there's opportunity but you don't know where to start and the fact that you're able to do that and now be in the position that you're in right now being around the people that you're around and again you've helped over hundreds of women 
yeah. get into the, step into the position that they, they're supposed to be in with their health, with their identity, with their walks in life. That's very powerful. And you you were able to do it in a short period of time. Now I can only imagine what you know life you know what life has for you in the next decade. Mm-hmm. And that's really, really exciting. So let me tell you something crazy. I didn't know I was gonna do this. Yeah. I thought I waste seven years of college, seven years of my life is starting occupational therapy. Because yeah. then my dad passed away. I had to go take care of my family. Mm-hmm. I couldn't finish college. I was right there about to finish and I'm like why did I waste so much time? I could be making millions now if I wouldn't have waste seven years in college, whatever. When I step in the United States, God showed me this was not just because I had a plan for you and this had to be or everything to do with the health system and you're going to change that and I need to use you for that. So no, that was not in vain, you know? <laughs> and I was like, oh my goodness, now everything makes sense. So There's there's a video, uh, actually it was one of the last ones, but I actually if, you, if you're off to see it now, it's, uh, Jordan, uh, it's titled, Sucks to be You, Raising a Weak Generation. This literally goes against everything that you've actually done. And this is who we're encountering now in this specific, in, in our world with our generation. I know you're so oppressed, my dears. I know life is so hard for you. You have to live in the richest, most equitable, most just country in the history of the world. You have to get a college education. You have to voluntarily go to lectures. It's so awful. I can't imagine. But you know, the people, people who are in war toward nations, they must truly, they must truly pity you. Goodbye. Goodbye then. I'm not that. Thank you, gentlemen. I appreciate your support, but I'm not that intimidated by this guy. So they're they're walking out on him. They're walking out, and obviously security in, in protest of it. In, in protest of what he's saying and what he's standing for. But those type of things we see we see on we see on social media. That's why I don't send my kids to college in America. Yeah. We see we see YouTube. Zero. We see YouTube, and then a lot of people watching is like, yeah, yeah, we are oppressed. Yeah, we are entitled. Yeah, we do deserve uh, these uh, w- 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 uh, the stimulus checks. Yeah, we do deserve our government to help us. Yeah, we we, we should be working only four four. The days. government should help us more. We should we should work only four hour uh, four days out of the week. Yeah, we should only work have five six hour work days. Yeah, you know what? We, we should be doing online schooling. We can we should be able to work remote and have PTO even if we're working remote. But then there's people like you who walk into this country looking for an opportunity. Mm-hmm. And instead of making excuses, kick their asses all instead of making excuses, <laughs> take their business. Okay. You, step, you step into that identity and you outshow, you outperform every single one of these kids who grew up in households that are unstable and with a sense of entitlement. So your so, success story in many areas. But do you know why? Because you have to be exposed to need. If you're mm-hmm. not in need, if you have available what you need, mm-hmm. you won't ever go look out for something different. Yep. They do have. Yep. Those, those kids live with their moms and their parents. They don't have to send money to their parent. And so it, when there is not need, you don't create any opportunity. You create opportunities when you have a need. Yeah. That's what I, That's it. I think. I mean, I, I, dude, I, I totally appreciate that because, you know, this is the big reason why my three older kids, my three older kids are 28 and my twins are 22. One of them is moving to Chicago, uh, from Chicago to Dallas. Mm-hmm. None went to college. I told them, I said, this is what you're going to go through college, student loan debt, and this is the type of environment you're going to be surrounded. Do you want to be a... Do you want to look like this in four or five years now? This is no poppy. We're just going to go to, uh, we're going to go to work. We're going to go to trade school. We're going to do d- these different things. And thank God, in you know, like four or five years, their friends are coming out. They're ho- so much more different. They're in student loan debt. I said, good. Aren't you glad you didn't go? And they're like, poppy, we're good. Because they weren't going to be doctors. They weren't going to be attorneys. They weren't going to be specialists where they really needed some deep education. They just want to work. They want to make a living. It's like, mm-hmm. poppy, we, we want to live your life. And I asked my daughter, 13 years old, uh, I took her on her first walk on the beach. In, in, in Hawaii. I've got tiki torches and moonlight and waves crashing. I, I was my her first walk on the beach, her first date on the beach. I said, baby, this is how a gentleman takes you on a first date. So what do you want to do? She goes, I want to do what you do. So what, being an entrepreneur, being an insurance? Yeah, why? I said, why do you want to do what I do? She goes, look at us. We're traveling all over the world. We've got some of the greatest things in life. That's what that's what ultimately a lot more people want and they don't go through the riffraff of this up. What's that saying? <clears throat> Strong leaders create good times. Sadly, good times create weak leaders and weak leaders create bad times so uh, that, that whole cycle so we're going to go in such weak times right now that strong leaders are going to be birthed people are going to come to this country like yourself they're going to be birthed yeah i 
do believe in education though i don't say you have to go get a degree and then see what you do with your life but if you know your identity and what you should be doing in this world what you're good at what are your skills what god gave you when you were born okay now you go if you go decide to go to college i do want to get a master in nutrition i do want to study more about the body i do want to be able to have the skills that i need to help these people and have the backup that society demand from you in order for you to be someone who can speak, mm-hmm. right? Because I can sit here and tell you everything I know about the body, but you're going to say like, oh, how do you know? There's some science behind it. Correct. But, Correct. Go to college. I y- agree. Yeah. So in those cases, I completely agree that you need to educate yourself because... What is it? STEM, science, technology, engineering, math, or medicine? That's it. More math and medicine, right? 100%. Yeah. Yeah. My, uh, my husband went to Harvard for um, design, and then he went to business school in SMU, and literally the environment in Harvard was what gave him or opened him many doors in his business because a lot of the people that invest was from Harvard, Harvard, right? So I'm not saying you have to go to college in order to be someone. No, Mm. no, because they don't teach you how to build a business. They don't teach you how to make money. But I would say complement formal education with informal education, which is which, like, you know what you know because you have read so many books. Like, you know mm-hmm. what you're talking about when you talk about making money. Mm-hmm. So I will trust you because you're not just talking out of like, oh, I believe this. But you have a backup. You, you're telling me something that you have proven to be right. Gotcha. You know? and, and by the way, here, here's another clip of somebody. If you want to make some quick holiday cash, here's a quick way to make 500 bucks oh, God. by taking a shit in what? a bag. Let's here's take a look a at this. Here's a weird side hustle you've never heard about. Get paid to a take year? a shit, honey. Let's go. You're gonna go to humanmicrobes.org. Just wanna make sure I'm passing the news. Donors. Watch this video so you can get some information. You're gonna scroll down and click become a stool donor. (laughs) Check out all the steps and get paid $500 per stool. If you have a bowel movement every day, it can total up to $180,000 per year. Don't flush it, don't flush your money away. Take the stool questionnaire and get paid to take a shit, honey. Follow for more. I don't understand. (laughs) I take like, two a day, respectfully. I'm sorry. I know you're a woman. It's much I take two a day, bro. Go do it in the bag. Bro. Go to that website. Go shit in the bag. Send it in. $180,000 a year just to... There you go. They want to study you, bro. Is, is, a, is that real? <laughs> yeah, it's like, a real thing. That's for real. It's a real. How are you donating that? You can't you put that inside of other people's uh, bodies. Yeah, put it in a Ziploc. <laughs> I, think, I think they send you specific bags for it, and they tie it up. So you sit, you crap, <laughs> zip it, and then you mail it. Yeah. Oh, my God. And then they send you cash. Or I, I don't feel, know how they do it, but I will feel really depressed to come to the world just to take a shit and sell my <laughs> like no. It's a, oh, it's a side hustle though. You can do it on top of what you're doing. You know, you can you know extra, extra marketing dollars. <laughs> oh my goodness! And if you don't like taking a shit in the bag, you can clean other people's shit um, because this you know th- there's a shortage in this in- industry because this is a video of a plumber apprentice making his money in his first day on the job. Let's take a look at this. Clip here. Imagine if some dookie got in your arm. I fucking freak. He's snaking a drain. Oh, let's see. So he's 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 to, he's, pu- he's puking in his out. mask. Those are old pipes too, bro. <laughs> no, you'll be all right. You'll he's puking because right. of the scent and the smell. You'll be all right. Five. Dude, heat it up. Stop Dude. talking about it. Right? That's so he's, he's got to crack open his pipe because yeah. yeah. the drains are clogged. Yeah, all right, Con Mahoney. Yeah. <laughs> Oh, here no here here no protective gear, no, no. Here it comes. Here he goes. Starting to, he's about to, he's Dude, puking. He's smelling it. Dude, he's about to puke. Time to throw up right now. Huh? There you go, oh guys. Here, guys. I, this is a, it's pays you six <laughs> figures, yo. <laughs> pay, and if you build a plumbing company, <laughs> Dude, bro, work through you can be like, oh, here it goes. It's coming all over the place now, baby. <laughs> Pressure's coming. <laughs> There you go. There you go. Oh my goodness. There you go. Do your job. Clean them pipes. Man, Clean them wow. pipes. What do you think's in that pipe, dude? Is- <laughs> <laughs> in the pipe. <laughs> what, what do you think's in the pipe, uh, though? We think's in it. <laughs> we think that fucking. Oh my disgusting, god. There's dude, it's he's Mahoney. just sitting on the floor. <laughs> 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 he's sitting on All right. the floor. All right. We can cut it. All right, Jordan. Hey, but by the way, man, these guys make $100,000 a year. Yeah, no. There's, there's better ways. Bro. I was coming out the Marine Corps. They're giving me a job. You know those porta potties, to take a big, big, big truck to take the the, the uh, hose, big hose. Yeah. Go to the mm, mm, mm. hundred thousand a year. Hundred thousand a year to suck shit all day. <laughs> oh my in, in a gosh. hose. 
So there's ways to make money in this country. Uh, Mike Rowe has dedicated his show Dirty Jobs to make these type of jobs, not for us just to laugh and be entertained by. But hey, if you don't want to go out and do the work, do the dirty work of starting a business, yeah. do the dirty work, make $100,000 a year. There's out the people who are starving. People are, that's, uh, I, I wouldn't do that. Would, would you can't. like to be a plumber? Can't. If this doesn't work out, would you like to be a plumber? Go ahead. Uh, no. <laughs> You're good? No. Keep, keep, your, keep your nails clean? I'm good with that. <laughs> uh, Speaking of which, we've got, uh, we've got another uh, career here that um, some people should take a look at because um, menu engineering has become a new thing. So if you want to start a restaurant, there's a new thing of how to design a restaurant to get more money out of people's pockets when they're dining at your restaurant. Let's take a look at this new career. Everything about a menu is designed to make Let you spend Let me know if this is true. Is There's that, a whole I industry this. called menu engineering. Here are five techniques these engineers use to optimize menus for profit. If you put a dish in a box, it bumps up sales by around 30%. People tend to order the first or last thing they see. And many people's eyes go initially to the top right of the menu. Th think so about that's the next where restaurants put their star dishes that are most popular and profitable. The longer the description, the more expensive the dish. We're talking an extra 18 cents for every letter over the average. Wow. Whole dollar pricing tends to suggest a place is exclusive or trendy, whereas using cents suggests value. Putting an expensive dish at the top of the list makes those that follow look more reasonably priced. So next time you're in a restaurant, see how many of these you can spot in the menu. I, I, I'm just curious, when you go eat... Okay, when, yeah. I need to tell you something so good. Yeah, that it's gonna add you so much value. Uh -huh. So when I met my husband, he was spending fifteen hundred dollars a month in food. You know, they order yeah, chick, chick, uh, fifteen hundred uh, Chick Fil A and all this trashy food that just keep you sick, right? And I met him and I said, okay, why are you eating this? He said, well, I don't know how to cook. You know, I never cook. In my country, we cook everything. We don't buy food. That so I'm talking exist. about yes. So I'm like, okay, now. I project to save him in the next 10 years $240,000 in food and health. How? He spent $1,500. I went to $1,500 to spend $500 a month. I cook, of course. But the worst is he was spending $1,500, but he was unhealthy. He had high blood pressure. He was wow. pre-diabetic. He didn't know it. Yeah. But I told him, let's do a blood test. Let's see what's going on here. Because yeah. I see this and this and this, you know, symptoms. He was not healthy, but he didn't know it. And he is a representation of the average American. People don't know they live on a metabolic disease constantly. That's what people, like 90% are pre-diabetic. They don't know it. Because right? they're eating out all the time. No, because they have insulin resistant. Majority of people have insulin resistant. Therefore, they have majority of the, the, the symptoms that you have. Like people is tired. They have no energy throughout the day. Yeah. Uh, they can't lose weight no matter how di many diets they They're try. they lethargic. Yeah, yeah. Yes, because they are metabolically unflexible. They're sick, but they don't know it, right? Wow. And the doctor will never know it if they don't do the right blood test. So we do the blood test. We check he's not, a, he's not the best What type in of blood health. test specifically do you request? Well... Mainly, I wanted to see his triglycerides, insulin levels, um, and not cholesterol. That's not the problem. The problem is triglycerides and insulin levels mainly. And what I wanted to see is like, okay, if you are really insulin resistant, which I already can see some symptoms, so we need to cut out the sugar and we need to increase certain all the food, right? So going to back to finances, wait yeah. a minute. Yeah. So we went from spending 1500 to spend 500 a month, right? Which, wow. yes, I could. It's a thousand. That's a big deal. Yeah. That you can reinvest and put into other things. Uh, well, that's a good thing. Yes. You can yeah. use that money for whatever you want. Yeah. Your kids, school, whatever sure. you want, right? Yeah. We're talking about $12,000 a year. Of course, we're not counting if we go on a day to go out, but I'm mm. talking on a daily basis uh, how you can cook with $500 a yeah. month and eat great food and yeah. be healthy, right? Yeah. Wait a minute. The average American person spends 12000 a year in healthcare. In 1950, they will spend $146. In 2021, $12,000 a year per capita. Meaning that if he is healthy, he will also save 12000 a year in health. So we're talking about 12000 in food and 12000 so on healthcare. 24000 a year. In the next 10 years is quarter million. I dollars. love the way she thinks. Okay, so... Give us a meal then, because I always ask them this, this question. Yeah. Well, give, me a, give me a tick of what you're both athletes, mm -hmm. right? So yep. what should athletes be eating on a budget of 500 bucks a month? Okay, mainly, the mainly source of protein is going to be eggs, number one, and meat or chicken, depending if you like, if you don't like meat, right? Okay. And then 
what you do, I'm going to teach you pretty easy. You have the plate here. You're yeah. going to split it on four, okay? Okay. The first three quarters are going to be protein and vegetables that are not starchy, okay? Because you don't want to... Give me an example. Name three. Uh, let's say um, spinach, broccoli, tomato, like avoid potato and corn, okay? That that will keep you with insulin. If you already have insulin resistant in the metabolism. So elotes? Place. Huh? Elotes? Yeah. <laughs> no. Eviten yeah, los elotes. <laughs> 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 and you're going to leave only one quarter of your plate for whatever is producing the disease okay. in Americans, which is the bread, the rice. Really? The, like all I'm the Filipino. I eat a lot of rice. You eat a lot? Yeah, I'm Filipino. I'm really Filipino. Oh, know. yeah. We, we eat a lot okay. of rice. Everything is rice, white rice. Well, don't stop eating it because okay. that's not sustainable. Are you able to do that for the rest of your life? Eat no, rice? You love rice. I love rice. Yeah, so yeah. split the plate. Do you recommend a kind of rice? What kind of Get rice do you recommend? Three, one. Okay. Huh? What kind of rice do you recommend? Whatever rice you want. I mean, I wouldn't really recommend rice for someone who is already diabetic or pre-diabetic. But if you don't have any health issue and you love rice, just try to don't eat the As whole much. plate of rice. It's just one quarter Makes and sense. the rest get protein and healthy fats. How much chips ahoy can I have? Chips? Ahoy. Cookies. Cookies. Um, <laughs> are you healthy? Do you consider yourself healthy? I, healthiest, think so. yeah. I think so. Yeah. I think so. As he ages, okay. he gets healthier. Does, it, does that make sense? Like it, this man, as he ages, the he healthier healthy. he gets. <laughs> yeah. So he's, he's like reversing his, his aging process. By, body by Milton. Well, he's always coaching me through it. Okay. You know, so. you know, I pass out of the gym. He gives mouth to mouth. You know, just, <laughs> mouth, mouth to butt. <laughs> <laughs> My mouth to his butt. But uh, it's interesting. Okay. So. What can people then have as dessert? What's that? What's a healthy dessert? Oh, I have an entire book that I wrote, ebook that I wrote on dessert. I love dessert. Okay, so every dessert you like, you can make it healthy. Like I have a strawberry cheesecake that I love it. I made it on a healthy version. Tres leches. I have not made that one, but I know how I could make it. I don't have it on my book, but I know how I could make it. If you can replace whatever food that is high glycemic index, like. Yeah. For, they have a flour, yeah, yeah. you can replace it for almond yeah. flour or for coconut flour where you have fatty acids that are really, like your body needs to cobalt your hormones and everything, but yeah. you will lower more the sugar or the high, the glycemic index. No wonder no wonder you're doing well in your business. You, you, you re, we need to do a whole like video and, and just conversation about the right things to eat. By the way, if, you, if we were to do like a cooking class, if we're doing like a healthy foods, maybe a, a fitness and foods class. And yeah. f foods, finance, and fitness. I don't yes. Know. Fitness. Class. Actually, maybe we do something like that. We should do actually, something fun like that. Yes. I, I opened a YouTube channel. I'm okay. new on this. Uh -huh. And what I want to do is talk about topics that people need to hear mm -hmm. to have more hope yeah. while I cook. Okay. Mm. That's beautiful. I, to, while I you love cook. cooking. Okay. Why don't we put this guy to something next year? Let's where do it. We do, because I'm doing, I've been already planning in January. Maybe do something in February. We do a foods, finance, and fitness class and we do the, the first if we got would you guys come out to this class if we go out there we put, put together some budget and uh, we'll put together uh an event but you just gotta we just gotta find a, a venue yeah. to, to cook I would we would love, love to, to see you cook yeah right? I, i'm really good at cooking by the way do you, you, you think it, to hear her cook that's like shocking especially after yeah, with everything they got going on it, yeah. it's, it's really rare nowadays to have a woman who runs her own business and as it's the capacity cook. that you're at and she's still willing to cook yeah. It's, it's, it's very, very. Right. It, but here's the thing, though. She, I say this very respectfully. You weren't born here. It's mm -hmm. usually women who are born in this country mm -hmm. who have that sense of like, I'm like, okay, I'm not, I'm not, I'm not getting there. I'm a professional mm -hmm. woman. I, I don't need yeah. to do all. This. It's usually women from different countries who come to the United States who still have that hardcore traditional cultural background where you're like, yeah, I'm gonna cook. I love to cook. Mm -hmm. That's what you know. That's what you like to do. So it's it's refreshing when you see it. Yeah. But I I can see why. But the, one of the things that I want to be able to touch on as well is. Um, People who have people who have a major issue in this country, mm -hmm. and it's seventy percent of the women who have this issue, because of what they eat, how they eat it, and because of what they eat and how they eat, it makes their body look a certain type of way and feels a type of way. And even though you work out three, four, five, six days out of the week, and you can be taking all the supplements that you need to take, doing all the blood work that you need to take, but if you're not paying attention to your mental health and trying to get over this obstacle, it's going to hit you hard, and that's body dysmorphia. Mm. Jordan, if we can pull up that video of body dysmorphia. <laughs> Uh, that'd be fantastic. What's the word dysmorphia stand for? Body dysmorphia oh, feels yes. like you look absolutely horrible. Work out. You've gained a pound. No, do not eat that. You will gain weight. I can't find anything to wear. Everything looks bad on me. No, do not go out. Everyone will make fun of you. It's so much safer in here. Yeah, you Can definitely you don't have body dysmorphia, Matthew. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, you, you, know, you definitely don't have body dysmorphia, bro. 
But there are people who do. And I want to touch on three things, quick three things, and maybe you can either be aligned with it or you can give, give me your push opinion, back, yeah. give me a pushback on this. But I believe there are, there are three steps that anyone who's watching this who knows you're going through it or you know of someone who's encountering this. Can, can I just share this definition? Do, run it. It's a mental, this body dysmorphia is a mental health condition where a person spends a lot of time worrying about their flaws and their appearance. 100%, okay. no matter what you wear, okay. right? And you can, be look, you can look a certain type of way. There's a lot of bodybuilders who have this. They're ripped, six pack, broad shoulders, great like almost model like I, I know guys who are models yeah and they pose for magazines and websites and yet they still have and they think they look obese yeah. but there are three things you can do that will help you overcome this obstacle and help you progress when it comes down to your mental health and also the way you perceive yourself number one is being able to get clarity just exactly what just met there right now he googled it and figured out what it is and what it looks like the more clear you get on what it is the, the more you'll know on how to be able to attack the condition that you have and you'll yeah. be able to focus on the right steps to take okay. number two is getting exposure this is a therapeutic uh, approach exposure and response prevention it's something that you can go to a counselor to where you will be consistently exposed to a mirror you're talking about it consistently about how you feel the way you're processing it and the more you process it you're able to gradually um, increase your exposure and increasing the exposure to the triggers that you have whether it's looking in the mirror whether it's speaking about it whether it's eating certain foods or thinking about certain thoughts and having those moments and the more you get exposure to it the less anxiety you'll have over time which will then eventually help you break the cycle and number three is one of the things that i teach all of my clients that work with me on a, on a more profound level is being able to challenge your thoughts there's a concept called ants automatic negative thoughts being able to challenge those negative thoughts that you consistently get being able to identify the ants being able to categorize them, being able to challenge them and reframe them, basically question the validity, and also being able to uh, create a new uh, uh, a new reality for yourself and then creating positive affirmations on who you truly are and being able to give yourself some grace because this is going to be a journey for you. It's going to be a challenge, especially if you've been encountering it for many, many years or if it's something new to you and just watching this podcast, you realize like, wow, I might be going through this. But definitely, if you don't know what steps to take, Definitely looking out for some form of professional help can definitely be a great start for you so you can kickstart this journey of getting over this obstacle um, in the realm of body dysmorphia. And I know you've worked with a lot of women and you, you're the one who told me that over 70% of women in this world, world or United States, world, world are encountering the issue of body dysmorphia. Mm -hmm. so how do you work with your clientele when it comes down to specific uh, illness? Okay, I want to be straightforward and honest. Sure. Uh, the problem here is that... Uh, Psychologists and occupational therapy and anybody on the medical field, they are leaving out the most important part. The, body, the, the, the human being is a body, a soul, and a spirit. We're only considering the mind, mm. which is the soul. Okay. We're like, okay, let's battle against the mind if we fix the mind. But the problem is it don't start in the mind. Yeah. Everybody's leaving the spiritual factor out which is God. And, and the thing with the spiritual factor is that Ephesians 6 says, some of you are not believers, but I'm going to tell you my perspective on it, is that we wrestle not against flesh and blood, but we wrestle against the, the principalities, principalities of right. darkness, which right. is the spiritual realm. Sure. When I have here people with dysmorphia, they have an identity issue. How do I know? I'm going to tell you, you carry you carry, you carry with the scene of other people throughout your life. If when, when, I, when I was a kid that was beaten by my dad, or if I was raped, What's going to happen that I'm going to believe certain things about myself that are a consequence of that traumatic situation that I went through, mm -hmm. right? So then this is going to translate in my life. I'm mm -hmm. going to live according to who I believe I am. Mm -hmm. And until you don't let this go and you can battle the mind, battle in the spirit first, it's like who God said I am, who God called me to be, who I'm truly, who I truly am. I'm not that situation. I'm not the person that was raped. I'm not defined by being fat or by being overweight. That's not who I am. That's just something I'm battling with, but that's not who I am. When you can go to the deep, deep, deep of the problem is when it, the Bible say, you shall know the truth and the, the truth will set you free. Mm. So you need to know the truth. The problem is a belief system is rooted in lies. People believe this is who I am. I'm fat. I have this problem. This is who I am. And that's, that's not a root. That, that's rooted in lies. So how, how do you approach this specific topic? By the way, thank you for sharing that. And I, yeah, actually have that. I actually have that on my arm, Ephesians 6, 10. Armor yeah. Really? Yeah. yeah. <laughs> so I appreciate you, uh, you, you bringing that forth, which is it, it, for a believer, it makes complete sense. But now for an entrepreneur or a business owner, uh, one of the things that I've learned over time, especially being around this guy, is mm -hmm. a, I'm not saying he's a materialistic, uh, more appearance type of guy, but appearance does matter in a lot, mm -hmm. in a lot of scenarios. People will judge you. Unfortunately, that's the world we live in. People will judge you 
based on the way you look, based on the way you dress, based on what you're driving, based on what kind of watches you have. And again, are you overweight or underweight? Or are you, are you, are you extremely fit or are you not fit? So how does one uh, go about that system that you're providing to these women when you're in, the, especially if you're an entrepreneur or business owner, and you you know that presentation is big and body weight is yeah. a big thing in the way you look and the way you carry yourself. How, how do you present that when it comes down to that? I love it. And uh, let me tell you two things. First of all, if people judge you, let's say I plant a tree, right? But the tree is deep in the air. I can push a tree. It's mm-hmm. going to fall. Is it going to fall? No. no. But if it just planted superficially, it's easily moving yeah. by the wind. Mm-hmm. The wind. Sorry, I'm trying to pronounce it right. The I wind. Love, I love it. Okay. Yeah. Why? Because roots, it's right? not rooted. It's not rooted the right way. Yeah. It's rooted in lies. It's not. You don't have identity. It just belongs to the wind. Mm. So first, you got to work on the problem, the bottom of the problem, which is the identity. People need to know who they are. They don't know who they are. They don't know what they're here for. They ask, well, what the heck I'm living for? Mm-hmm. Who, like, what am I called to do? First, second, if you want to address the physical problem, once you address the mental problem, what I do with my clients is something called uh, uh, mind mastery. Mind mastery, where what you do is cultivate a resilient mindset to break the negative patterns or to break the um, system, the belief system that are wrong. But how do you do that? With deep questions. You need to go deep. So my client come to me. I'm going to give you an example, right? This is one of my clients. She came to me. She said, well, you know, I have tried all the work possible. I have never been able to lose weight. I have uh, obesity and diabetes and PCOS and hypothyroidism. And I'm like, okay, what have you tried? She's like, well, I had a trainer. I had this. I had that. I can now sleep. I have insomnia. Why? I started asking deeper questions. When to got to the root, he, she lost her husband two years ago, right? And she's going through a depression. She's in a grieving process. So nothing that we do is going to be effective until she addresses the root cause, which is she is oppressed. She lost her husband, right? Mm -hmm. So what we did is going deeper until we find the wrong belief, which she didn't believe she was able ever in her life to lose that weight. She was feeling a loser. She was feeling abandoned. She was feeling lonely. When we got to the root, we changed the belief system. And now today she's healed from all the chronic diseases she had. So what you do is mind mastery. You need to go deeper. Who, yeah. like, what, what causes the problem? Where is the problem? Yeah. You talked about uh, uh, Ephesians 6, uh, 11, you know, the armor of God and, you know, in the, 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 the war against principalities. I want to go to Romans 12, too. It says, do not conform to the patterns of this world, yes. but be transformed by the mind. renewing of your mind. mind. And that's what you guys are doing. Yeah. If you want to look at yourself, then you got to change the way you see things. But before you change the way you see things, you got to change the way you think things. Yeah. Because the way you think things, the way you see things, is the way you will do things, and that's the result you're going to get. So, um, when you look at, when you're looking at um, you know the areas of, of fitness and food and what we're talking about, um, I want to take a look at something that you are are both examples of to and through the pandemic. Let's take a look at this article here uh, that a lot of people got richer during the pandemic. Right? Who got rich and who didn't get rich? One out of four black households and one out of seven Hispanic ones will have zero wealth by the end of 2021. Let's take a look why. So the pandemic made Americans richer across every ethnic, racial, and income group, though not equally. Home values shot up. People got a boost in median uh, house, uh, household net worth. Things shot up. But then what happened at the end of the pandemic? They shut off the checks. So, so, so when people got the checks shut off, let me see here. This um, let me let me go down here towards the end of this article. Um, this person here, Duncan Moore, right, 27 years old, was making 18 bucks an hour, 18 bucks an hour. And you mentioned to me that uh, you had a business that shut down in Argentina. Mm-hmm. The business shut down. This restaurant particularly shut down, but he was making 18 bucks an hour. If you look what 18 bucks an hour is, let me where's, where's my calculator? Here? So 18 bucks an hour times 2080, which is a 40 hour work week, 52 weeks a year. That's about 37 thousand. That's about um, 37 thousand dollars. A year, so 18, 18 times 2080 is 37,440. But now they're getting checks of seventeen hundred dollars. Okay, Seven, uh, they're getting this. Uh, did I do the math right here? We went to eighteen times 2080, 37,440. Okay, yeah. now the restaurant closed. Now they're getting what? They're getting stimulus checks. Seventeen hundred stimulus checks every two weeks. Mm. So instead of working, now you just stay home. Yeah. Because we got to make sure nobody spreads COVID. <laughs> so, so now they're getting a, a, a bump in income. By the way, this, I think this guy was um, not uh, completely full-time. Anyway, just by staying home, he's making just as much money staying home as he was working. 
So just tell him to him. But good for him, though. What did he do? He decided to get down, uh, pay his credit card down, mm. get his laptop fixed, and start an emergency savings fund. And then he started getting involved in real estate. And then he, people like yourself started your own business. But guess what a lot of people didn't do? That. A lot of people just took the checks, video games, Netflix and chill, mi vida loca, boom. Next thing you know, these stimulus checks run out, unemployment checks stop. I mean, people were getting paid four or $5,000 a month. And then here's what's happening. Wealth gaps are showing up all over the place. White wealth gap, black households, Latino households, right? So they're paid, they're, by the way, I don't like to go too much into these uh, gaps because I believe these gaps individually, not as a whole, individually, these mm -hmm. gaps can be shut down very quickly. Look at us, all three of us, we're not white, don't care what the color of our skin is, but we cared about what? We cared about creating our own economy, yeah. mm. to learn a new language to come here, to go out and say, you know, I don't have to be dependent upon a big box gym to, to provide my clientele. I don't have to be in an insurance company to, to, to pay my bills because I can create my own uh, independent world. So what, what are your thoughts there? Well, I want to know from you guys, what are your thoughts there? Because you had friends. Yeah. You had uh, people that said, you know what? This is the worst economy ever. Uh, but yet you monetized this economy. And what happened is, is money floods the economy, stimulus checks, 80% of all the dollars printed in America was printed in the last three years. And a lot of fake success is being exposed right now because yeah. now this flood of money is not around. These stimulus checks aren't around. These unemployment checks aren't around. People have to pay back their student loans again. And now fake success is showing itself to be, yeah, I wasn't making as much money as I thought it was. How, how, how many, uh, and now you guys are sustaining and you guys are elevating throughout the economy. What's been your experience, those with folks that uh, lot, had that type of opinion? A lot of my friends were actually u utilizing, and no names, obviously, but and I really doubt they'll watch this episode, so I really hope they don't. But there was a lot of my friends who were utilizing those stimulus checks for the wrong reasons. They were just having a good time. As you said, just having a great time, not really thinking about much, not thinking about what the next 12, 14, 16, 24 months holds for them. Yep. And at the end, when the government said, all right, no more, you guys are yep. done. Yep. They're behind on the bills. They took off. Some people took out some fake PPP loans and they were using stimulus checks just to do whatever they want. And now they're in so much debt. So they, they were already like in forty, fifty thousand dollars $50,000 of debt for them. It's a lot yeah. of money. Yeah. And now that they have PPP loans, they have all these stimulus checks and they have all, all these things that no longer are providing income. Now they're deeper in a hole. Their jobs actually, for, for, uh, the furlough just continued on and they lost their job. Now they absolutely had zero income. Whatever they had in their savings, they, were, they said that, oh yeah, we'll, we'll, we'll make it up by using the stimulus checks that we're gonna get next year. Like, bro, you're not gonna get a stimulus checks next year. If you look, if you follow the economy and what our government's doing, you will not get one. Yeah. They're so secure, they were so secure that they were going to get that. Fast forward a year and a half, two years, no savings, barely making ends meet. They had consolidated all their debt. One of them went into bankruptcy. And right now, two of them are doing Uber Eats, trying to figure out new ways to make money because right now they're struggling because they didn't prepare the right way and they utilized whatever the government was giving them as an opportunity to just have fun and just not use their own income. It's sad. Great, clear, clear examples. Yeah. Did you see any of that going on with some of the friends and colleagues uh, you had? I did, but I, I, of course I didn't get anything from the government because I'm not even a citizen. <laughs> <laughs> but, you don't even worry about you create your own. You create your own stimulus. Yeah, everything. If I go buy a car, I need to go buy cash. Like that's that's my reality. But um, I believe that everything you give easy, easy come, easy, easy leaves, and right. um, you need to start. You create opportunities. Like yeah. find ways to create opportunities, no ways to take advantage of the money that could go to someone else who needed yeah. it. Mm. That's right. Guys, the bottom line, there is no get rich quick, easy type of scenario. By the way, that, those might work. I was getting gas the other day and the guys off the corner scratching. Da, 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 da. I'm like, bro, did you win? Yeah, I did, man. So what'd you do with your wins? I went and bought more lottery tickets. Because he's, he's just trying to buy hope, right? Yeah. Instead of the same hour he spent there, whatever, however time he spent there, he could be reading a book. He could be learning about business. And that's where people wonder, why do the rich get richer? And why do the, the middle class and poor get broker and broker? Well, it's been a year now since I've been in our house, our house here in, in Frisco. Yeah. In a beautiful neighborhood we live in here in, in Starwood. And and uh, every time I drive through the gates, I pinch myself. I'm like, what, I live here? I live here? The, the type of people that live here? I, yeah, I live here. It's my wife's first house. And a year later, guess what? We still don't know how to work. I was just telling it to my son yesterday. Guess what? We still don't know how to work in our house. The TV remote control. <laughs> I don't know how to work my TV. My mother-in-law comes in, she yells at you don't know how to work your TV because she, she loves watching sports. Yeah. I don't know how to work my TV, mom. What do you want me to do? The yeah. sacrifice I paid, the simple sacrifice I paid to have success and financial security in my life is to not watch TV, to not be so 
you know, all into cheering for everybody else. Of course, that's important. I, I lo- by the way, I love the Chicago Bears. I love professional sports. I'm a huge fan of athletics. But at the same time, too, I don't want to be more fanatic about somebody else winning and building their dream than me building my own. I hope that's what everybody here that watches this podcast will do in 2023 to business plan for 2024 to make that year the greatest business and financial year you've ever had in your life based on the things that you plan to do today and listen to the stories that uh, uh, at least here from Argentina comes in and kick tail and set an example here that a lot more Americans need to be doing here in America. No excuses, learning another language, opening doors for herself, knows nobody here. And look at her. Very proud of you. By the <laughs> way, let me ask you, any final thoughts uh, before, before we close um, out? Uh, about health or in general? Whatever's on your mind. Any final um, thoughts you're about? I, I would like for people to... I talk to you. I don't know what camera. <laughs> I would like for you to think of what are you good at? What will you do for free? This is the final thought I want for you. What will you do today for free if you wouldn't have to worry about finances? Once you find what you will do for free, you will find what is your purpose, what you like to do, what you're passionate about, and then you find ways to make that profitable. Mm. Slam dunk. We need, to have you. we need to have her back. And if you guys are interested in a food, fitness, and finance class, we might hold one here locally in a Dallas Ooh, area. I love that, that being said, please put your comments. Say, put food finance and fitness the comment section if that's what you want to see happen here in a Dallas area. With that being said, I have Milton Alvarez. Appreciate it, big dog. <laughs> At least our special guest who has Thank to come back so into the 7 Fear Squad podcast. Please subscribe to the YouTube channel. Hit like and please put your comments below. You agree with us? You disagree with us? Please let us know here in the comment section below. With that being said, from Dallas, Texas, I'm your money smart guy. And until we meet again, continue to live smart. Continue to love smart. And be money smart today. See you next week. Bye-bye.